Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Today's topic is one that I know everyone who's watching is interested in, and that is good health. I have um, recently, as you may know, if you watch my videos, been through um, a medical situation where I had surgery, I had my gallbladder removed, and that was uh, an experience uh, I will never forget. It was life changing, and also I, you know, I've been thinking about it since the operation and the and the recovery, and thinking how it was a gift. You know, it was a gift that number one, I had it taken care of, you know, quickly and I'm okay. But also that I learned the absolute value of good health as we get older. Now I've been so fortunate in my life. I'm 74, I've never had any surgery. So that was one of the reasons that this one was particularly challenging for me. But, um, you know, you've, I know you were with me through the journey and uh, it's, I'm so grateful. But uh, the, the point here is that, you know, I've realized that if I'm going to live a healthy life from now on, I've got to make some changes and not just changes to my in diet and, and all these things but I've got to mentally see that I have control over this and that there are some very basic um, simple things that I can do that I wished I started doing 30 years ago I didn't and many of you probably are thinking the same if only I had whatever but we for whatever reason we're not able to do that and now we are where we are in our 60s and 70s and we are looking at you know ways that we can stay healthy thea black banjak is one of our bloggers and she wrote this article on six basic rules to improve your health now i'm going to read these and i have a discussion around them and you're probably going to be nodding margaret we know this like we already know this you know you don't need to tell us but I, I i'm telling you because i didn't listen and i think that if we just listen for a minute and and uh, and and open our hearts to what we might be able to do differently we might have a you know a better shot at this you know healthy lifestyle but um thea's got a very um sort of down-to-earth basic view of it i'd encourage you to read the article anyway the first thing Here's the six things that we can think about. Now, this one is particularly interesting to me because I had a gallbladder surgery and that's, a, you know, of course, it's got all to do with digestion and eating food. And I realized, I thought about it, you know, well, why did this happen? I mean, you know, why did I have such a, in so many gallstones and, and so much, um, you know, in my body that was not healthy to the point that I had to have my gallbladder removed? And I thought about it and I know I have enjoyed you know, high fat foods. I love butter on everything. I, you know, I've, I've made my liver really work <laughs> over the last 74 uh, years and my little liver and gallbladder just, just couldn't deal with it anymore. But I think that's the first thing to do is think about your diet. And I don't mean diet like in diet to lose weight. I mean in the diet for what you're eating. And I think that the big message that I've done the research, like you tend to really focus on this when you're going through this yourself, right? You tend to really like do some reading and research. <laughs> it's not like, you know, something you take lightly when you're in the hospital. And so I guess the key thing is minimize packaged food, processed food, and more or less, if you can, focus on a plant-based diet. I mean, that doesn't mean you can't have bread and all these things that are made from, you know, from grains and whatever, but it's just choosing the things that are, um, you know, going to help your body process them quickly, carefully, and, um, you know, eat healthy food. Now, we, we could talk about, you know, food that's got high density in nutrition, eating more just vegetables. I've been making smoothies and just popping in like some uh, kale or broccoli or cabbage or just throwing it into the smoothie. It doesn't add that much of a weird taste if you put berries and mango and other cool things in there. And you can just drink your healthy foods if you don't want to sit down and have a bowl of spinach. Although I like spinach. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually learning to like these things. Anywho, that's the first thing is your, the foods that you eat. Eat healthy simple basic boring but it's true get your body moving on a daily basis and I'm not talking about exercise we don't have to go to the gym we don't have to lift weights we don't have to do any fancy you know stuff we just have to move and it just means getting out in the world stop you know circle and if you have to walk around your room or your house do that but it's just moving it's just doing something that we do in like 7,000, 8,000 steps a day. Just do something to keep that body uh, moving. Walking is like fantastic. And if you can walk with a brisk kind of, um, you know, movement, that's even better. Um, I know a lot of people are working still and they're sitting at a desk. Get up, try to get one of those standing desks, you know, make a point every hour. If you have to put a timer or whatever, just get up and walk around. Get your body moving. We're made to move. We're, we're you know, we're... It's so funny because we're in a technology um, an environment where 
everything is very automated and you can sit down and watch you know movies and whatever and, and and so on but we're just still little cave people you know we still need our bodies to be energized and all these chemicals that we need for um, our bodies to age you know more healthily are in that act of movement so moving is the second thing i know I'm, I'm getting boring but this is and the next one's going to be like oh my gosh margaret stop but it's true and that is sleep sleep is like the most important thing that you can do I mean, I know, I mean, actually it was really funny when I was reading all my comments after when I was in the hospital, someone said, you know, when kids sleep, they sleep to, oh, is it sleep to rest or something? Or is it to, oh no, when children sleep, they sleep to grow. When adults, older people sleep, they sleep to heal. And I think that's it, that our body, sleeping in, in, in allows our body, our brain particularly, to de detoxify, to regenerate, to heal. One second. <coughs> <coughs> Speaking of coughing. But anywho, that's the thing. I'm not going to edit that. That's going to go through. That's just what it is. It's a cough. Excuse me. So some people need nine hours sleep a night. Some people need seven. Most people need about eight, eight or nine. I've actually, as I've talked about before, had this very uh, interesting rhythm of going to sleep at eight or nine at night and waking up at four or five in the morning. I think that's okay. I mean, I did the research on it. As long as you're deep sleeping and you're actually sleeping well, not waking up at two and three and then getting up at four. Um, but you know, you can just find your way. Seven hours sleep. I'm not going to be lecture. No lectures. I'm not, by the way, nothing here is judgment. <laughs> I, 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 I'm particularly mentioning my own experiences because I'm the same. I'm just like you. Um, fast fasting, intermittent fasting is another thing. Now this is actually not as hard as it sounds. People talk about intermittent fasting and you go, oh, I don't want to be able to have to fast for 18 hours and uh, you know, only eat between, you know, six and or six in the morning and, and 10. Not like that at all. All it means is give your body a chance to to rest from digesting food. So if, you know, the, the basic rule is try to go 12, maybe 13, 14 hours without eating in your in your 24 hours and then do all your eating within that other 10 hour period. So for example, if you if your last meal is at seven at night, try not to eat until at least eight, maybe nine in the morning. Now I know it's, it's tricky and, and there's sometimes when you can't do it. And by the way, this is like, there's no like, you have to do this every single day. Not like that at all. You just have to try. It's just a mental thing of like, when you wake up, I used to, used to wake up at six and I would have breakfast then. But I had my last breakfast, my, my dinner, maybe at seven or eight, just before I went to bed, which is crazy. I'm well, crazy in my opinion. <laughs> I'm crazy. And by the way, as I keep saying, this, this is not for you to, I'm not judging or, or, you know, telling you how to live your life. I'm just giving some thoughts on sleep. Sleep's pretty important. Um, so if and some people do need eight or nine hours sleep. And so that's fine. Take it. Don't think guilty or I should only be needing seven or my, my neighbor, you know, she, my best friend gets only six hours and she's great. She's super healthy. I thought I was super healthy until I got to be 74 and then things started to happen. So that's important. Um, the, the fasting is important. So if you finish dinner at seven or eight, wait till about eight or nine or 10 the next morning and try not to, um, you know, have any snacks in the evening. <laughs> no cookies, no milk in the middle of the night, you know, whatever. Just do your best to, to just fast. Fasting is cool. Manage stress by proper breathing. I'm telling you, breathing for me has become such an important thing. Now, I think I've mentioned before, and I'm not trying to like, woe is me with all my challenges because you you guys have got things going on much like me and, and even more challenging. But uh, blood pressure, um, you know, has been something for me to, to think about. And breathing, especially when I was in the hospital, was actually really important to keep blood pressure down. So learn how to control stress and your blood pressure and other things that are measurements of stress, cortisol production. Try to do that with, again, good diet, sleep, eating, you know, all those things are help, helping, but breathing is really, really, really important. And doing it strategically when you need, um, you know, to come like in a stressful situation or when you, you know, can feel some pain or stress coming on. There's tons of videos on YouTube. I'm not, I don't have any recommendations. Just try to find breathing, meditation. There's phones for your um, apps on your phone that you can do this uh, guided breathing. Super, super important. Most important, most important. Just one word, positivity, be positive. Honestly, 
I know, I mean, it's, it's so funny before this, I mean, like before I would do a video on this, I would say these words and they didn't have that much meaning at a deep, 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 deep level because I'd not actually gone through it. Now that I have, I can say that the one thing that kept me, I think, improving and growing and seeing that this is a gift, seeing it as a positive thing to, to have, a, have a health situation was my positivity. I honestly believe that if you can see the, the, the positive side of things, you will then move through them more quickly. And, you know, just let things go. If a, if a negative thought comes and you're worried about something, goodness knows I did so much research, I, I could be, I'm an expert on gallbladder. <laughs> but, you know, but I, I just had to minimize the um, negativity. Uh, and, and I mean that not so much like being negative, I mean in a fearful way. Let go of the fears and move towards a more positive, optimistic um, approach. So I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that my sharing my own situation has touched your lives because I know so many of you are dealing with things that are complicated and, you know, we're all going through, um, you know, this uh, transition as we get older into being our bodies, just being a bit more, uh, needing a bit more of our attention. So I hope those have helped you, those sort of six basic rules that can improve your health, guidelines, I'll call them even though the title says rules. But take very good care of yourselves, stay strong and healthy, and please leave your comments in the section below so that we can share and learn from your experience. Okay, everyone, take good care. Bye-bye for now.